Okay, hello and welcome everybody. This is Ben with FarmQA. Uh, thank you for joining our webinar series. Today I will be covering the customizing scouting forms topic and what this will be covering is everything that you should need to know about our scouting templates. And so this will get into the details of how you can customize those forms to match what you're looking to collect in the field. I will say that if you're looking for information on how to use the scouting app, we do have our, our second webinar that we, we did does cover that in more details, and this is going to get even more specific on the template side opposed to just the app as a whole. So with that said, I, I mentioned the agenda briefly here, but we're going to get into the details of how you create a template. I'll talk through within that how you can define questions, different categories within the templates, and then from there you can even duplicate templates, which will walk through that process. And then a lot of our customers are having adaptive templates. In other words, throughout the year, they have different question sets that will be presented to them as they scout. And so I can show showcase how that scenario does get set up via the templates. And then the last topic I just had as a agenda item that I wanted to cover would be, we use the term scouting templates, but really it's a, a flexible form engine. So if you wanna use the, the forms to go beyond just scouting, I'm going to talk through some of those use cases and uh, show the flexibility of the system. So that is the, the goal for this particular webinar. And as always, we're going to have the chat open. So if you would post your questions in that chat, and then we will be addressing those at the end. So with that said, the product will speak for itself here. So I'm going to jump into a live demo and I've got some demo farms set up here with some fields. And the first thing to note is when we're talking about templates, that happens within the scouting tab on the left-hand side of the screen. And this is a, a pretty fresh enterprise, so there's not a lot of data in here. But what you do see is that when you go through, let's say you're a new customer, you will get some default templates based on the crops that you have selected. So in this process, you never really have to start from scratch when it comes to creating your forms, but you do have that flexibility if you would prefer to start from a blank template. Uh, so that's what I was showing here is on the scouting tab and then templates in the top left is where the templates live. And within this screen, you can see all the templates that you have created in your account. You can see what crops that those templates are associated to, and then also for reference, the date that they were last modified. These templates do extend beyond growing seasons. They, they persist through time. Um, the one thing to note as we go through here is that the role that a user has will dictate if they can edit templates or not. So this functionality is reserved for a system admin or an agronomist role within the Farm QA system. If you are a crop scout or a viewer, you will not be able to edit the, the templates, which I'm about to show here. What I will start out by showing is this is a, a corn template, and this is one of the, the forms that we would start you with as a, just a default. But what I'll actually do here is I'm going to just clean up a couple of these sections just to show you what it would be like to, to start from more of a clean slate so that uh, you can see more of the functionality as far as setting up questions and different question types. And so what I've done here is I've deleted out all the sections and what we're left with here is a plus button in the top right. This button allows us to add categories. And so this would be things like a, if I want a summary section, I can add that in. Now within each section, you get the opportunity to add individual questions. Within that, you can see we have an, a list to pick from as far as the question types. So these would be numeric, text, pick list, date entries, group questions and in in the case of if it's a corn template you would have a specific corn yield estimate question and i'll be stepping through each one of these data types as we build this form so with that said with the summary section we do have a, a unique question type for summaries and so what you can do to set this up properly is we could have a, a section called summary you could call it notes, general, whatever you want to call that the section header up here. And same thing goes for whatever you name the question. So on the right hand side, this is the question detail pane, as you can see here. 
So this is the, the column we will interact with when we're adding details. So in this case, I'm calling this question the summary. And what that really means is that'll just be the how we define the question on the mobile app. We do have the option to add in additional text or hints. What this is, this would be only available to the data collectors. So in the scenario of a consultant for a retailer, if you're an agronomist out scouting and you've got perhaps scouts underneath you, this would be text that only they can see, but it will not be pushed into the final report that the grower gets to see. So I'm gonna leave that blank in this case, but we will use that here uh, in some further questions. One thing to note when we talk about the summaries and, and what's unique about this is we can allow you to have summaries either if they were the first section within a template or the last section and you have the show multiple lines option turned on. So there, there are a couple parameters there that need to be set properly, but then whatever's entered in this section will get pulled out as a summary on the final report. I'll make sure to show that when we get to the point of showing a PDF. Oops, now I'm gonna add a second section here and we're just gonna call this plant conditions. And as I do this, I'm going to use a couple different data types here. So in this case, Let's say we want to track something like the growth stage. And I'm going to use a pick list to do that. So we could say growth, growth stage. And within the pick list, this is where we can define the individual values. So we could say emergence. Let's say uh, we'll just enter in some basic corn growth stages here. And you can see how that would work as far as building out an individual list. So I won't go through all the options here, but you get the concept of building out your own pick list. Now within here, let's say we, we want to add a question for plant height. So I'm going to choose the numeric entry to do that, and I will say plant height. Within here, we get the option for the numeric to define how many decimal places we'd like to see. So let's just say one decimal place is what I'm looking for. And let's say in this case, we can set a range. So minimum and maximum. And I will just say maybe 38, well, let's say a bigger value than that, say 50. That brings up a good point as far as units. So if you wanna put units, you can define that in the field name or in the question name, if you do want that to appear on the final report, or you can put a hint for your scouts to say, um, collect this in inches. And then this would be an example of something that just the scouts are able to see. You can manipulate this if you want more space or real estate here to be manipulating these questions. Um, the other thing to note within a question for if it's numeric is that you can set a default value. So if you want to, let's say, always have the app populate at 20 inches and then you can come up or down from there, that's what this is allowing you to do. One example for that is a lot of people might want a question to always be answered as zero. And what that would allow you to do is that on a report, then that question will always be answered opposed to if you don't set a default, then we only show the answers that are the questions that are answered. And uh, I can show that on the PDF report as well as far as a, a default. The other thing, and for users that, that may have used the system last year, this is a new function where you can allow multiple numeric answers. And so in this case of plant height, you could do three, four, five different assessments in one spot. And then we will automatically average and show just the average on the final report. So that's what this button is allowing you to do is saying, I want to be able to answer this multiple times per location. And then you can also set a default for how many pre-populated answers we want to have in. So let's say you will send out a team of scouts and you always want them to assess plant height five different times per spot. That's what we're indicating here. Uh, we can also do uh, another example of numerics would be, let's say plant populations. So we'll, we'll enter that as a question type, but now what I'm gonna point out here is this will be a, a different type of entry on the mobile side because of the range that we set. So let's say that this should be somewhere between 20 and 50,000, oops, key that in. And, and actually we'll, we'll put in the full values here. And then again, we could set a default if you wanted. In this case, I'm gonna leave that blank just so you can see how that appears on the mobile side. 
with this, I'm going to allow multiple answers with there, and but I'll just say that the default is, is one pre-populated question. Uh, you can see how we can continue to build this out, but I'm going to showcase a couple of the other data types. So in here, I'm going to say date. So let's just say we want to track emergence. So we'll say emergence date. Okay, and one thing throughout here is if you add a question and say, okay, that's maybe a higher priority, you can at any time, be reordering this template as far as the questions and also the sections as well. So as you can see, we can be reordering by simply dragging and dropping these questions around. Now, another feature within this template designer is let's say that you've got a question that you want to be uh, repeated. So you can, sorry, I should say copied. So at any given point in time, you can see that there's this icon just to the left of the trash can that will actually copy and paste this question type. So let's say you wanted uh, a question here for growth stage, but I'll duplicate this. And now it takes all those answers, but it, it uh, duplicates that. And now we could name this again. So one example of this is if you wanted a, a second list for reproductive growth stages versus your vegetative growth stages, this is a way that you could do that and without kind of re redoing your, your pick list options. Um, so, you, and then you can see how I could delete out individual vegetative states and be left with just the reproductive states. Uh, the other data type that we've hit on, so we've done numeric, pick list, and date. Uh, let's see, the other option would be text. So, in here, I'm just going to say plant condition notes. And in this case, I'm not going to check this show multiple lines. And you'll see how that will differ from um, an option where we do have multiple lines. And actually, uh, thinking about this, I'm going to set up two questions, and we can see these back to back with that option turned on and off. So we'll just call this one notes one and notes two. And just note that on the second one, I will be turning on the multiple lines. Okay, so from here, I'm going to create a couple other sections. We'll call this insects. And in this case, I'm going to set up a series of numeric answers. And let's say we're looking at percent damage, zero to 100%. So we can look at maybe cutworms as one of our options, but this is a, a even a better use case for the, the copy paste in the sense that if I wanna set this up as these can all be arranged zero to 100 and they can all be answered multiple times. Now I can just duplicate this in series and be naming this to different, different insects. So you could say army worms, and let's just say you know, spider mites, and then I'll just put a couple of answers in here. So that would be how you can set up and use effectively create with that duplication process in insect tab. Now I wanna showcase the group questions. If you were in last week's webinar, I did showcase this as well, but this is a, a new tool when it comes to the template setup where I can set up a question called weeds but because I use that group question option, now I have this little plus button that appears that wasn't there on any of my other question types, but it allows me to add nested questions underneath the group. So this could be something like if I want a pick list for my weed ID, and we could say thistle, foxtail, curly dock, and kochia. So you can see how you could build this list out as, as long as you wanted in here of different uh, in this case, weeds. And then if we also want to be capturing within this group question, something like a weed severity, we can have that alongside the weed ID. So you can say this is none, orders only, low, medium, high. And then we can also have a series of uh, numeric questions. You could say weed height. And let's just say we're gonna run this zero to 30 inches. And then I'm gonna finish out this group question with just a, a note section. So we'll say, uh, we'll just call this notes. So now you'll notice when I answer this and I'm gonna allow this to be answered multiple times. So this, I'm doing this at the top level for the full group. And now we'll be able to repeat this uh, and, and as we find multiple weeds in a field. Now, one thing that's unique about a group question that we need to do is within any one of these questions, 
we can choose which one becomes the promoted question. And what that really does for us is in the end, a group question type will get pushed into its own table on the final report. And this promoted question will be what we use as the header. Uh, and that will make sense here in a second when I show the final report. But just note in this case that I promoted the question that was the, the actual weed ID. OK, uh, I will create one last section here and we're going to call this um, summary bottom. And the reason I'm doing this is because our summary sections can show up in only two places, the first section or the last section or both. And so I just wanted to showcase if you did want two sections to show up here, you could say, um, let's just call this the irrigation summary. Or better yet, we'll say it's irrigation recommendation. OK, so now the key thing is after you're done making changes, we need to save this template. Once we do that, that template is going to be available on the mobile application. And the way we assign templates to fields is actually via the crop. And so what I've done here is I've clicked on settings. I've clicked on the crops tab. And now what we see is there's a, a column in here called templates. And as we look down this row, we can see which crops have the different templates. What I've done here is you can see I've set up a conventional corn as a crop with some varieties underneath it, along with just a, a typical corn crop with a different with a its same template. What I can do in here is if I click the edit icon on the right hand side, I can choose what template to assign to this crop. I already had to set the corn, so I want to leave that as is. But the reason I, I walked you through here is to showcase that if you did want to have unique templates per crop type. We could take this corn template and similar to how we did with questions, we can copy and paste this entire template or duplicate it. And now we can say this is the conventional corn template. And you could then have a unique question set within here that may be specific to what you're looking at for conventional corn or think of this as maybe seed versus uh, not seed. So you can use very similar templates, but maybe have just slight differences. And now when I save this template, and you notice I go back into that same crop tab, I can now use my edit icon again, and we will see conventional corn in this dropdown list. And now as I save that, any fields that are assigned to either of these varieties or just the conventional corn, they will get served up that unique template that might be slightly different than our corn template. The other thing to quickly note is that we can also assign templates down to a variety level. So by default, they get the same template as your high level crop. But if you do, for whatever reason, want them to get a unique template, you can set that within a variety level by using the edit icon or the pencil icon here. OK, so now the next thing we'll do is we'll quickly walk through on the mobile side what some of those question types look like and then that will allow us to make some adjustments and see how the template changes impact the final report. What I did here is I just synced, and the only reason I needed to do that is because making real-time template changes. We do auto-sync every few minutes, and so if it is something where you make a change as an agronomist and you want your scouts to get those new templates, that should happen automatically as long as they uh, are not in offline mode and they've waited greater than several minutes, like I said. So what I'll do now, I'm going to go to the field list and just find any field that's set up with that corn template. And once I enter into this field, I get the option to add an observation. And this gets into just the basic functionality with the app. But by default, we're going to serve up to you the default template that we just set within the settings of the program. But at any given point in time, you can choose a new template. So if you wanted to, you can see how we get to the, a picker list of the different templates. In my case, I do just want to use the default. And within here, now we see the sections that I had created across the top. And the summary text or where we have it set to be multiple lines. You can see how that appears with a single line versus multiple lines. If you recall me setting up those two different question types. And that is what's set for the summary. So you can say overall, it looks good. Now, if I talk through uh, the growth stages, I set up as, as larger pick lists, so you can see how that would appear. 
for the date picker, if you click on that, that option to enter a date, it brings up a calendar view where you can simply click, click a date and that will populate. Now, if you recall for plant height, I talked through the scenario of an agronomist wanting a scout to check plant height five different times. So you can see here how that would look where you got, we populated with five different boxes and circling back to the template. The reason it's doing that for a refresher is that if we go to plant height here, we set the default to be five on this line for allow multiple answers. So that is how that, that function works, but now this is a, a numeric entry where you can set it up and it's going to be uh, a key in entry. And you can see how I could do that back to back. And then the same thing goes for plant populations. But if we look back to the template, I only had one uh, pre-populated answer in there, but I get this plus button where I can answer as many times as I want. And so I can enter that in as well and be putting in population values. Now, the key thing here with the repeaters is anything I enter in here, this will automatically average in the final report. And so that is great for your stand counts. It's um, great for doing any sort of dense numeric entry. Now, if we go over to insects, you can see I did that back to back pick list option or sorry, numeric sliders. One thing to note with the numeric sliders, if you recall, I'm doing numeric entries here for, let's say, plant populations where I key in the values, but if you prefer the sliders, like you're seeing here, the difference in that is any range that is set to be less than 100 units, that will be a slider. Anything greater than that would be a, a key in value. And you can see here that my range is zero through 50, but I have one decimal place of accuracy. So because of that, I actually have, um, you know, uh, each decimal place represents a unit in our system. So that's why I'm getting the key in entry. Whereas if I cleared that out and went to zero, now that would become a slider. So I'll show that after I sync the app, but that is the biggest difference if you want the sliders versus the key in. Now, as you can see here, this is where we can do the repeaters with sliders and that's gonna average. The other thing to note is that for weeds, this is our group question setup. And what this looks like, and I'll bounce back to the template just as a refresher here. This was the nested questions underneath here for ID, severity, and height. So now on the mobile side, we, we start out with this weed question. As we click in, we get to see the weed ID. From here, you can search. So let's say I want to find weed nine in my list. Well, I'll actually pick an actual weed. Let's just say curly dock. It was high pressure. We indicate the height. And now because I made that entire group question a repeater, I can click that plus button again. And now let's say I saw foxtail and this is borers only and it was low or smaller plants. So you can see how you can do this unlimited times as far as the amount of uh, entries you're making here. And then what you can do within this as well is add a note to say, uh, let's see, go trip pressure needs to be addressed. So you can add a note in there. And now as we back out, actually, I'm going to do a bottom summary too, just so you can see, it looks like I made that a single line. So this is a good use case where this actually won't turn into a summary because it's not a multi line like you're seeing here. So that is one key thing to get true summaries in farm QA to work. So we'll just answer this to say apply quarter inch in the next seven days. Okay, so now we're gonna submit this report and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And we'll point out a couple of things to note. So I'm just gonna customize this to match what I'd like this to look like. But now as I open the PDF, we're gonna see a couple of things. And what I'm gonna point out here is on the repeater numerics, we're gonna get the averages, as I said. So you can see in this case where we had plant height, that's automatically averaging that assessment. Same goes for plant populations. Uh, I did do, we keep talking about the summary and what that does is if you have a, a summary set up in Farm QA, it pulls that text and it shows it above the table of, of data. And so like it describes the summary, you can have that defined first. Whereas bottom summary, I didn't have that as a, a multi-line answer. So it shows up within the table. 
The other thing is the group questions, as I mentioned, they show up as their own independent table. And so if you want that look, you use the group questions. And if you recall, I set the promoted question to be the weed type. And so that's what shows up first in these rows. So if we would have set the weed severity as the promoted question, those would have been what shows up first and are the primary uh, primary units, if you will, within a group question. So those are your, your different options as far as data collection goes. Uh, something I wanted to point out here would be if we go back into the templates and I did walk through how we can create a conventional template versus the traditional, but a more practical use case of the duplication here would be if you wanted to say this is actually my corn early season template and we'll save that. Now I'll duplicate this and, and I'm going to say this is the late season corn template. And within here, I'll actually add a new category. We'll just call this yield estimate. And I'm going to put this second as far as the order goes. But now the last question type that I didn't hit on, and it's actually specific to corn yield, is if we add this question, it adds a series of sub questions automatically. And so we can say this is corn yield. Now, if you guys have ideas for other calculated questions where it has a series of sub entries and it rolls up into a calculation, let us know because we're very much interested in, in building in additional calculated questions. But this is showing the concept of if I save this, now we're going to have two templates, one called early season corn and one called late season corn. And if we look at the crops, these are going to be assigned to the early season corn. Well, this I guess is conventional, but what I'm pointing out here is let's say you get to August into September and you want all your fields to start using that late season template. And the reason being is you want that yield estimate question to show up, whereas you didn't want that in the early season template. Um, you can just flip that over on the, the crop tab to now start using a late season template. And now as a scout, they will start to get that version of the late season template when they click on corn fields. So now if I go into, let's click on a new field and I add an observation. Now you see I get that late season template with the yield estimate. So that's that concept of having adaptive templates where you can set up and have different question types. Perhaps, you know, you remove some of the herbicide or the, the weed information later in the season and you incorporate more insects, less diseases, things like that. That way, the list of information on the mobile app is always condensed or clean, if you will. Just to showcase this last data type of yield estimate, this is a, a type of group question. So you can see we get sub questions within here, but now I could answer corn width, corn length, and perhaps I'm, I'm showing a scenario where I have three cobs each. Then as we back out, it's going to spit out the average automatically within here. And then one thing I um, could change here is that I meant to change that to a multi-line, so it would be a summary. But anyway, the, the point being here is how you have the, the multiple templates, how I switch that to late season, and now we're seeing that on the, the mobile application. Now, if you are in a scenario where, let's say, you've got those two templates set up and you've got the, the cornfields that were planted later are still needing that early template, that's a scenario where you can use the, the template picker. So for example, if you get into a field and this one, you click it and you say, oh, this is giving me by default the late season corn template, but it was planted later. So it's at a, as a, um, a less mature growth stage, you can still toggle over and enter data using that early season template, as you can see, as it doesn't have the yield estimate in it. So we've got the flexibility there to allow you to to, to do that and, and always have a template that you need to see. Okay, uh, one thing I was going to hit on to, to round out the, the webinar here would be the, the flexibility of the form engine. And what I wanted to showcase here is we do call this scouting and, and scouting templates, but if we click this blue plus button, this is how you can start create a template from scratch. So instead of duplicating or instead of using the kind of off the shelf templates that we give you, you can click the blue plus button and now I'm going to create this and say this is a soil sampling template. So again, we're kind of branching out and saying it's really just an open ended form engine, 
where you can come in here and say this is sample information and you could use this for really anything you wanted to capture if it was tillage passes if it was soil sampling in this case um, if it's it's really anything that you do on a farm operational level you can track it using our mobile application in a form so in here i could say something like a pick list for sample depth and say this is zero to six six to 24. you could say question here that's maybe numeric to say soil moisture percentage zero to 100 and and now this question type would be saved and we give you those questions on the mobile side as well so again it's it's nothing new here as far as the functionality but it's just opening up the uh, the capabilities or kind of the imagination if you will of how to use these templates um, one thing that, that does tie into templates that i do want to touch on here is that if we click on settings and i go to organization we have a section in here and this is enterprise level account level settings and one thing that that is maybe a little bit hidden that comes into play with sky and templates is that if you want to have your reports merge together for the same field within a certain time period we can do that automatically for you so what i mean by that is we've got customers who send out a team of scouts or you might have two three people checking the same field at the same time if you, in that case, turn on your merge scouting report feature in Farm QA, you can then set the time window to say any report that I submit in the same field, in this case, let's just say 24 hour, within 24 hours, it will automatically get pushed into one report, one PDF. Uh, another use case for this would be if it's a scenario where you're out scouting by yourself and you want, let's say you scout first and then you might wanna make changes or you maybe do a more detailed observation the next day, you can have this set up even if you are a single operator uh, that can come into play for you as well. So that is a template function and that really kind of rounds out the webinar. And like I said, the goal here was to get into the details of template setups. Something I would mention as well is if, if you're a new user, you just create an account and your default templates that you get, perhaps they're not exactly what you want. We do have other, for example, corn templates available. If you want to contact Farm Curie support, describe what you'd like to see, and then we might have a better option for you to use that's pre-built. Uh, we also have question or, or customers that really range in how detailed they want to be when they scout. And so that's really one of the, the nice things about this system is the flexibility in this. And so my potato template is just an example I had where you can just have a summary. And so you can go from just entering in essentially a big paragraph to all the way down to doing very specific insect counts and have them averaged. And so there's kind of the, the wide range there of flexibility. So don't feel like our templates are too detailed because they always can be stripped down to a very, very simplistic level if that's what you're after as a, as a user. Um, with that said, I think I have run over the time here, so I am going to wrap up this session, but we would love to hear from you with questions. And then in addition, if you need assistance with the templates, that's part of the service that we offer. So we would be happy from a Farm QA support team to sit down in a web demo and walk through your specific use cases and set up your templates to match your needs. Um, so with that said, I appreciate your time and we will be looking for the questions to be coming through.